Hi, Nylon Melodies at Gear for Music, Synth and Tech here. Today we are checking out audio interfaces. What are the top five sellers that Gear for Music sell and what are the differences between them? Before we continue though, make sure that you like and subscribe. We've got lots of videos like this if you'd like to understand more about music technology. But in this video, we're talking about audio interfaces. And an audio interface is the bridge between the real world and your computer. And so, yes, you can make music on a computer without an audio interface by kind of plugging in a pair of headphones and recording through the built-in mic that's on your laptop. But there's a lot of problems that you'll have with that. Obviously, you can't plug in proper microphones. You can't plug in your keyboard. You can't record your drum kit. And so you need a bridge to take you from the real world into the computer. And the other benefit of using a audio interface is that Audio interfaces are built for speed. They're designed for sound. And so when you are doing things like using virtual instruments in your DAW, an audio interface and the drivers that it uses will help you play a MIDI keyboard in without perceptible latency. So when you push down the key, you should hear the virtual instrument playing back to you nice and snappily and responsively. That's the benefit of using audio interfaces, as well as being this kind of bridge to the world. And so there's loads of interfaces. We've got five different ones that we're gonna look at in this video. And like, I'm not gonna tell you which one is the best one, sorry, because that's up to you. What I'm gonna try and do is give you the facts. So you can help make a kind of comparative difference, help you understand what the differences are between them. Um, and it's up to you. So you can leave a comment and tell me which one you would like. So first up, because we're going in price ascending order, we have the Sub-Zero AI2. Now, Sub-Zero is Gear for Music's like own brand audio interface, and they're very proud of it, of course. And with the AI2, as with all of these interfaces, they are two in, two out. And that means that you've got two audio inputs in the front here, which in this case are combi jacks. And so they look a bit weird. The idea is that you can plug an XLR cable that would come from a microphone into that. And then into the center of them, you can also plug a jack. So if you've got a keyboard instrument or two microphones, you can plug them in at the same time and you can record dual mono. That is to say two single channel instruments. So like a guitar and a singer at the same time, or you could record one stereo one stereo thing at the same time. So all of these interfaces make that possible. I thought I should mention that. With them, you've got these little instrument buttons which change the um, preamps inside. And with the Sub-Zero, I wanna mention preamp gain with all of these. What that means is it's the amount of volume amplification that it can give to a microphone. And it's quite important, especially if you use things like dynamic microphones. Uh, so a dynamic mic is a um, less sensitive mic, really good for doing podcasting and like voiceover. Uh, the Sub-Zero AI2 has 58 decibels of gain, which in the general scheme of gain is pretty good. And so that means that you should be able to use dynamic microphones that require a reasonable amount of gain with this without introducing hiss. The other thing is you can plug in condenser microphones because it has got 48 volts phantom power. Condenser microphones are more sensitive than dynamic. They're like studio type microphones. Sound very detailed, sound very nice, and you need an audio interface that can supply phantom power. All of the audio interfaces that we're looking at today can do that, and there's a little button to turn it on. You've got a nice little monitor level because that's changing the output volume to your speakers. You have a monitor switch here. What that does is it allows you to hear the inputs in real time without any delay or latency. And without sort of going massively into it, that's just hugely valuable when you sing over a recording that you have in your DAW, your workstation software. And so um, you can listen in mono or stereo, which is nice. You've got headphone level control and a headphone port on the front, which is obviously useful. And around the back, by the way, this is a weighty beast. This is actually a really quite like hefty device. I don't think I've ever held an interface that's got such heft. It has XLR mail jack outputs, which is kind of primo. Uh, you can obviously get um, XLR mail to TRS or whichever cable connectors you want. Uh, and then USB connection. This is a USB bus powered interface. So you can take it anywhere, go to the train station and make some music with your AI too. Uh, that is something you could do if you are so inclined. In terms of like software and drivers, there are no drivers for it. It doesn't have drivers and there isn't a software package that comes with it that I'm aware of. But 
it's really good value. So I think in terms of value, that's what you're looking at here. Obviously, you've got 58 dB of preamp gain, all the kind of key things that you would want to do stereo recording on dual mono. One of the quick thing is you don't have MIDI on this interface. On some of them you do, on some you don't. Uh, and a word on MIDI is like MIDI is the control methodology where a keyboard can fire off virtual instruments in your DAW. And it can be nice to have MIDI inputs on your audio interface, uh, but it isn't essential because a lot of MIDI devices, MIDI keyboards these days are USB. And so they supply the MIDI through USB really negating the need to have MIDI on there. But it can be useful if you want to record external sound modules or you've got like a really old keyboard or sort of, you know, piano in the corner of your living room that's just got MIDI connections on it, five pinned in MIDI. Can be nice to have. Moving on. Next up, we've got the Presodus AudioBox USB 96. This is like the 25th anniversary model, which is in very fetching sort of black livery. There is also like a silver and blue one as well, which has been like a long-standing audio interface for Presonus. I know they're very proud of it. In fact, actually like, um, I remember watching a video a few years ago where they drove a truck over an audio interface of this type, as in, not this one, um, <laughs> but, but the blue one, and it was fine. So. It is a metal chassis, it's very tough, a bit like the um, AI2, like it's a solid sort of citizen. It's two input and two output like the other ones. And again, we have these combi inputs. So once again, you can plug all kinds of things in, guitars, mics, keyboards, it accepts everything except RCA. So I suppose if you were trying to plug in like DJ decks and things like that, you can get an adapter cable that's like RCA to jack or RCA to XLR and go in here. You've got controls to individually trim the um, input Inputs, which is nice, and these are stepped, quite nice little controls. Once again, we have phantom power. That's true of all of these interfaces, so they'll all take condenser microphones. Now, a word on the preamp gain, it is 52 decibels on the audio box versus 58 on the AI2. So it's a little bit less gain, not by a crazy amount, but a bit less total gain, um, which is a fact to take into consideration if you were plugging in dynamic microphones. Um, you have got headphones round the back, but there is an adjustment on the front to control them, and there is a main level control, uh, which isn't a big dial like on the AI, but you know it's there on the front so that you can adjust your speakers. And then going round the back. Oh, looky here, we have got MIDI input and output on the AudioBox 96. So you've got MIDI in, MIDI out, um, jack outputs to your speakers, and there's that headphone port that I mentioned. And like the uh, AI2, it as well is USB bus powered, so you can plug it in and power it via USB. There's like, you don't need another sort of power brick or something, which is good if you want to just like throw it in a bag. Again, go to the train station and just make some, make some music in the train station. <laughs> As, as we all do, of course. Now, talking about software, um, there is actually quite a significant software bundle with this thing. And so it comes with uh, both a copy of Studio One Artist and Studio One is Presonus's DAW, which is very good, like been growing and growing and growing, now in version six. You also get a thing called the Studio Magic Bundle. Allow me to please refer to my notes uh, in order to get this right, because you get a lot of software uh, with the Studio Magic Bundle. Uh, Analog Lab Intro, which is like a VST kind of synth lab that's from Archeria that's full of thousands of different sounds. Uh, BX Opto is an optical compressor. It sounds like, you know, very good for like leveling out vocals. BX Rock Amp, it's an amp. You get Cherry Audio's MG1 synth and the uh, Audio Voltage Nucleus, which is like a modular synthesizer. Klanghelm's SDR R2 tube, which is a like tube preamplifier sort of compressor, I believe. Um, Isotope's Neutron Elements to help you mix. KV331 synth master players, load of like 1,800 sounds in there. Uh, Lexicon MPX-1 Reverb, MPX-I, I should say. Marg EQ2, that's a really nice uh, EQ that has um, airbound, which is like that kind of airy sort of like high frequency lift. It's like a really nice plugin for adding kind of presence and sort of life back into a signal. Also comes with replica reverb, output movement, uh, SPM attacker, SPL attacker plus, uh, which is a transient shaper, UJAM Rowdy virtual basis, UVI model D piano, uh, and a trial for melodics, which is the sort of amazing kind of teach you to learn to play the piano and your drums uh, piece of software. That's a lot, like there's actually quite a lot of software with this. Sorry, that took a while to say, but I did just want to call it out because I think it's important to consider the software too. 
especially if you're new to this sort of world, it's really helpful to get a load of software. Um, obviously, other software is available from Gear for Music, but, um, but yes, you get a bunch with that. So very nice thing to do. Very tough build. Um, yeah, check it out. So moving on. Next up, Universal Audio's Vault 2. Now, I have got the Vault 4 as well, for good measure. And there is a Vault 276 and 476 and others. So I can kind of talk about the whole range. But, but the Vaults are like a new range of audio interfaces from UA. The whole idea is to like, you know, make a good, small, competitive audio interface that will be ideal for beginners. But, but like, there's some really cool things that this does. Like, the main thing is that it has this vintage button. And the vintage button changes the otherwise like transparent kind of no color of the preamps and it adds color to them. And what I mean is that um, it adds a sort of slightly kind of tubey sort of drive and a little bit of a high frequency lift. I've actually done a video all about the vaults, which is on this channel too. We'll link below. So it's the one of these interfaces that I've got some particular experience of using. Check out the video if you want to know more, but, but suffice to say that the, the vintage button just gives you this tonal color and you can basically record and print that color into your channels as you go. And you've got it on both channels, so you can like plug in a keyboard and get vintageness in stereo or, you know, individually treat things. And you obviously don't have to use that. You can turn it off and it's a very transparent audio interface with 55 decibels of gain. So it's 55 on the volts. On the front, obviously, you see we've got combi jack inputs, just like on the other interfaces. So we can plug our guitars or, you know, keyboards into the middle, or we can plug mics with XLR. There is, of course, phantom power. There is a direct button, which lets us hear the inputs just instantly. And so we can uh, sing over our DAW and not hear a weird echo. That's the latency problem. So you, you can sort of circumvent that. You've got a monitor control to adjust the um, sound into your speakers, so you can trim that on the front panel, and obviously a headphone um, jack with its own level control. But around the back, oh yes, look, we've got MIDI as well. So this does have MIDI in, it does have MIDI out. You've just got two um, outs for your monitors. Now, there is a 5 volt DC jack input or 5 volt DC barrel input for um, powering. They can be phantom powered as well. It has a USB-C connection. Uh, you get a USB-C to USB-C cable and you also get a USB-C to USB-A. That is the normal like boxy square one that you may well have on your computer. I know that if you're like me, you don't have exclusively USB-C connectors on your computer. So it's nice to know that that exists. And so yeah, I thought I'd just very quickly mention there is the 7.6 model. What they have is the vintage button plus a compressor button as well, which is in my experience, Really nice, like the compressor just sounds great. Um, however, if you are seeking a compressor and you've got the Vault 2 and the Vault 4, you're in luck because there is, of course, lots of software that comes with it. So you get a 30-day trial for Spark, and Spark is Universal Audio's um, like downloadable um, plugin collection. So it's like a collection of really nicely modeled recreations of classic studio bits of gear, um, and it's a a subscription thing, you can subscribe and access all of the things that are in Spark and more. So it's a way of accessing virtual, really lovely sounding virtual gear, basically. And you get a 30 day trial. You also get Ableton Live Lite 11, the DAW, and a bunch of software I will rattle through. The SoftTube Marshall Plexi Classic Amp, so you get a nice amp. You get the SoftTube Time and Tone Bundle. You get Selamini's Melodyne Essential. That is really nice. And Melodyne is a pitch correction software. Melodyne Essential lets you pitch correct a single track of vocals. So very useful. I have used it. I needed to use it. I was very grateful it existed. Um, so it's very nice you get that in here. You get Relab LX480 Essentials. That is a really nice recreation of a classic lexicon reverb. Ampeg SVTVR Classic. Uh, Brainworks BX Tuner. That is a tuner, as in to tune your guitar. BX Master Desk from Brainworks Classic. That is a really nice plugin for like mastering your audio. You just put that on the output and it kind of takes care of like the mastering process. It's sort of magic. It's really good. And then UJAM's Virtual Drummer Deep, which is like a really nice kind of vintage drum kit and it like can drum along. And UJAM Virtual Bassist Dandy, which is like a really nice bass guitar. And finally, uh, Spitfire Labs, which is like, you may be familiar with Spitfire. 
It's like a Spitfire Lab sound pack in there as well. There's kind of a bit of a vintage vibe to the software and that's sort of the spirit with this. And so yeah, to like sum it up, it's really, it's like capable of recording very cleanly, but it also has this kind of vintage character that you can draw on and the software bundle is kind of embodies that vintage spirit too. So if that sounds interesting, then check it out. Moving on. Next up. Oh, very satisfying. <laughs> this is the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 third gen. You probably heard of Focusrite and the Scarlett if you've looked into audio interfaces because I think unequivocally, this is one of the best selling audio interfaces in the world. So the Scarlett has done outrageously well, um, super, super popular and, and probably with good reason. And in terms of what you get on that Scarlett, you obviously have two ins and two outs as we've been looking at on these other interfaces. Um, a little bit unusually, although a little bit like the, um, the UA, you have this little air button, which air like adds in some high frequency kind of air. So it, it creates this kind of slightly more driven, slightly more airy sound. It's very similar in that sense to the vintage button on the uh, UA, but it isn't based on like a classic preamp like the UA's one is. Uh, but you've got two inputs, you can plug uh, jacks into the center and you've obviously got XLR inputs too. It obviously has phantom power as they all have. And in terms of preamp gain, the Scarlett is 56 decibels. So 56 for the Scarlett. We've got a button for direct monitoring in order to hear ourselves sing over our tracks. And you've got a nice sort of big monitor dial here for a nice sort of smooth action. A uh, button to engage phantom power and a volume control for your headphones, feels very nice. It is like quite a nice sort of brushed metal kind of chassis. And around the back, oh, oh look, I get to do it again. This is very satisfying. <laughs> Hopefully I get to take this home afterwards, right? And so on the back, it's just outputs left and right, and then it's USB-C. So yeah, really, really simple, but the Scala is incredibly popular and probably with good reason. So um, in terms of software bundle, we get a really good collection with the Focusrite. They call it like the Hitmaker expansion. And with it, you get auto-tune access. That is a really nice touch. That is the uh, Antares auto-tune. So auto-tune that you will have heard of. And what auto-tune access does is it kind of, unlike Melodyne, it is like free pitch correction or you put it on a track, tell it the key, and it will try and correct your vocals automatically, hence auto-tune. What it doesn't do is like with Melodyne, you can actually go in and individually kind of contour and sort of pick specific notes. With auto-tune, you kind of set and forget, um, but it's auto-tune super popular. So I think it is a, a nice thing to get in there. Uh, you get Relab LX480 Essentials as well. That's that Lexicon Reverb. Soft Tube's Marshall Silver Jubilee 2555, um, which is very nice amp modeling software. XLN's Addictive Keys Piano and a Rhodes as well. So just like a nice piano and nice Rhodes keyboard. XLN Studio Rock Kit. That would be a really nice drum kit as well with like patterns as well. So kind of we're talking like really like essential sounds to produce music with, obviously. And then BX Console Focusrite 5C Strip. It's a bit of a mouthful, but that is Brainworks' recreation of Focusrite's like classic mic strip. And so it has like a bunch of like important functions in it, mic, compressor, EQ, and it's the perfect thing to put on a vocal track. So it's a really nice plugin and that's included as well. So you obviously have the air button, but you also have software that will help you treat and process vocals that is built in. Uh, and then the other one is the Red 2 and 3 EQ and compressor, which is like kind of legendary stuff from Focusrite. It's nice EQ, nice compressors. So these are just like really good, like essentials and will give you a nice cross section of sounds to it. You can add your voice and then also like your keyboard, your um, drums, what have you. In terms of MIDI, we don't have MIDI connections as you probably saw on the back. So you would rely on your MIDI keyboard having a USB connection uh, or a, you, by the way, you can also get separate uh, USB to MIDI adapters like very inexpensively that just have a USB on one end and two MIDI cables on the end. So I definitely don't let MIDI be the reason that you would choose one or the, over the other, but it can be useful if, depending on what your setup is. And so, yeah, in terms of like other unique features and kind of things to suggest, I think one point to say is that this one goes up to 192 kilohertz. It is capable of recording at a higher fidelity. That is not to say that there's anything wrong with recording at 96 kilohertz, which I think is pretty good too. 
The Scarlet will work with iPad Pros, kind of a nice thing. If you've got the correct USB cable, you can go straight into like USB-C iPad Pros and record with them. You've obviously got the air button, which is a nice thing to have. And again, I think it's just worth highlighting that this is like best selling, like it is. And so that I think counts for something that a lot of people are, are picking this up. So great. That is the Scarlet. But we've got one more. What's it going to be? Well, so the last option that we have is the SSL2. Now, that is kind of awesome because that means that this is a solid state logic product in an affordable audio interface lineup. That's amazing. This is obviously the company that make high end, like legendary consoles like the SSL 4000, making an affordable product to appeal to music producers, uh, something that you can stick in a bag and take anywhere, but that kind of has a degree of the heritage, obviously, that they have from their other consoles, because although it's not the same preamps and so forth that you would find in a 4000 series console, there are nods to it and there are some clever little buttons which, which get, get us kind of somewhere there, I think is the hope. The SSL2 is two inputs, and I, by the way, I'll just tilt this up so you can kind of see it here. You see it on my little like close up. You've got two inputs um, and we've got nice gain controls, it have those lovely little SSL pots. Very nice here, you've got a segmented kind of bar graph to let you see what level you're coming in at. The ability to adjust like instrument level, line level, and engage phantom power per channel, which is quite nice. But interestingly, this 4K button. So I mentioned the heritage. And so the idea is that the 4K button kind of gives you the flavor of an SSL 4000 series preamp strip. So, you know, giving you that sort of flavor of what would be in a higher end SSL console with like a bit of subtle coloration and high frequency lift. So sort of similar to the Universal Audio, but of course with a slightly different flavor. And of course, not ever so strong that um, it wouldn't make sense to leave it on all the time, if that makes sense. These are very subtle effects, but they do compound as you record channel after channel after channel. So really nice to have. Obviously, you can see it's not an absolutely chunking mon monitor level here. That is just an absolutely massive dial, which is really nice because it's in a desktop form factor, then it really suits being used as a kind of you know monitor controller. Sit on your desk, tilt it up, unlike the other ones that we've looked at. You've got phone volume here, which is nice down at the front, and the headphone port itself is at the back. And then we also have the ability to hear direct monitoring and engage whether it's stereo or mono. And we get a mix control to let us blend the amount by which that's happening, which is quite nice. On a lot of the other interfaces, it's a button. Around the back, you can see this, you've got two combi inputs. So as we've seen on the other interfaces, you can plug keyboards and guitars and things into the jack inputs, and you can plug microphones into the XLR inputs. You've got a L and R um, balance jack out, headphone port there, and it is USB-C. So very nice. Uh, in terms of like software bundle, it too has a good software bundle. And because SSL make plugins, a bit like with Focusrite, you know, Focusrite make their own plugins too, you get a plugin called the SSL Vocal Strip, which is a really nice kind of all-in-one vocal channel strip for compressing, not just vocals, even though it's called Vocal Strip, you could, you know, there are kind of basic tools in there, compressor EQ and things, so you can use that too improve your vocals, and drum strip, which is same sort of thing, but for drums. So two really nice plugins that I believe they would sell on the side, uh, but you get them included. You get Melodyne Essential, which is really nice. We talked about that before. That's pitch correction where you can, you know, fine tune every element. Amplitude uh, 5SE, which is like amp modeling software. Live 11 Lite, the DAW, so that's Ableton Live. So very fun creative DAWs we've seen on a couple of the other interfaces. Also Native Instruments Hybrid Keys and Complete Start. Those are like entry level products from Native Instruments, but give you loads and loads of sounds. 2000 sounds, in fact, 16 synths and sample players, as well as the AAS session bundle, which includes like roads and guitar sounds and so some sort of core sounds that are in there, as well as those nice SSL plugins. I think that's a really, really nice touch. We don't get MIDI on this, so there is no MIDI DIN as we've seen on some of the other interfaces, but I think like the key thing with this is it's an SSL. And although it's obviously an SSL that's had to be made affordably, it still makes it a very high quality product. Um, SSL do provide quite detailed specs to do with the conversion quality and, and flatness. It does seem very flat in my research. I think this is the flattest of all. So it is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, as many of them are, but it's plus or minus 0.05 dB. 
I believe that's for the line and instrument inputs. It's, to my knowledge, is the most precise of the interfaces. It uses AKM converters, which is a nice company that make nice audio converters, and they actually tell you that. And yeah, it's got a lovely desktop form factor. Very pleasing. But it's obviously the more expensive of the uh, ones we've looked at. They've all kind of gone in ascending price order. So that's it. Obviously, we've been talking about two-channel interfaces, and with a number of these interfaces, they've got like bigger and smaller versions. Check down below for loads of links, direct links to Gear for Music, where you can purchase with an additional three-year warranty, which is a very nice thing that Gear for Music offer. Of course, it's not about what I think. I've been trying to present the facts, so I'd be really interested. What do you think? Which of these interfaces would you have in your studio? That's it. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye.